of the goodness of God. Oh, 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 my life, you've been faithful, faithful to the end. So I live my life in pursuit of who you are. Of who you are Oh Lord I just want you more More I just want you Oh Lord I just want you tonight from the depths of our hearts we sing oh lord i just want you more more i just want you
Let's lift that up tonight. We sing. No guilt, no shame. No sin, no stain. Is greater than the great I am. No fear, no grave. No other name is greater. So much. 
Sometimes I feel like away driven and tossed by sea. Sometimes I feel like giving up, but I know. By what I feel, yes, I know. I know you're real. Spy what I feel. Oh, come on, church, make this your prayer tonight. We say, and I. Sometimes I feel like giving in, to all that the world is offering me. And sometimes I feel like you call.
confusion you're not a god who forgets and you're not a god who will ever leave me you call me your beloved cause you're not a god of confusion you're not a god who forgets you're not a god who CI family. For those of you that don't know, my name is Benin and I have been the ninth grade girls crew leader here at the Counter Influence for the past, I think I'm coming on to my fifth year. It's been such an amazing experience and so many great memories have been made throughout my time in this ministry. But never, ever, ever in a million years did I think that I would be in this position to be able to share the word with you. Granted, it's not my first time, obviously, but it just, every time that I prepare, it reminds me of how God moves in our lives in such an unexpected way. He's done it for me, he continues to do it for me, and he will absolutely do the same for you. But as I was preparing for this sermon in particular, I get the word, I'm excited, I'm ready to prepare for it, and then I feel like I need to change it. So as I'm trying to figure out, I'm looking for inspiration. I am going through old journals from pre previous years. Um, I'm just praying to God and saying, God, give me a different word. And then every single time I looked through something, it just wasn't it. But I kept hearing in the back of my mind, stick to what I gave you first. So here we are with the same word. But I also believe that it's not by a coincidence. There's a message that God is trying to send to all of us that he does not want to miss, especially in this season. 
he's doing a new thing and what's coming is better than what was left behind. But before we get into that, I am a firm believer in reviewing to remember. And I feel like it's the only way that what we learn sticks with us. So if you would just do me this favor and think about last week's sermon. Jesse shared an amazing word. What were some of the main points from last week's sermon that either you remember, that stuck out to you, that you have been trying to or you plan to apply to your life? Write that in the chat for me. So I believe that God has some of us in a preparation stage. Preparation will always come before the propelling. There's no stopping once the propelling starts. That's why the preparation is so important. We need to be present in the prepping. That's a lot of peace. But it does remind me of a flight. I love traveling and I miss it. But before a plane takes off, it needs to go down a long runway to gain enough speed for it to lift up into the air. Once it's up in the air, there's no coming down until it lands at its destination. It's not going to turn back and say, wait, it wasn't ready for takeoff, let's try this again. God wants us to be ready for takeoff. And this can only happen if we are attentive to what he's doing to prepare us in the right now. It's something that we cannot miss. Our main passage for today is Genesis 19, verses 15 to 26. And it says, At dawn the next morning, the angels became insistent. Hurry, they said to Lot. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out right now or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. When Lot still hesitated, the angels seized his hand in the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city, for the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be swept away. Oh no, my Lord, Lot begged, you have been so gracious to me and saved my life and you have so shown such great kindness but I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up to me there and I would soon die. See, there's a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. All right, the angel said, I will grant your request. I will not destroy the little village, but hurry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. This explains why that village was known as Zor, meaning little, means little place. Lot reached the village just as the sun was rising over the horizon. Then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them, along with the other cities and villages of the plain, wiping out all the people in every bit of vegetation. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him, and she turned into a pillar of salt. We have all heard the story of Lot's wife, but we don't realize that in this moment, God is doing a new thing for Lot and his family, or God has tried to do a new thing for Lot and his family. So let us pray. God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the word that you have for us. I thank you that you have allowed us to just be able to be here and gather, even if it's not physically, Lord. And I thank you for the new thing that you are doing in our lives. May you open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive exactly what you want to say and what you want to do. Lord, may it be your message that you want to bring through, not my wisdom and not my might, but yours, oh God. May you be glorified in every single word, and may you bless everyone under the sound of my voice. It's in your holy and precious son, Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So when God prepares us for new seasons and new journeys of life, it's always for us to move forward. 
beyond what we are used to. And sometimes that means outside of our comfort zone, away from what we left behind. In this passage, God wanted Lot and his family to move forward and away from what was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. There had just been too much sin, pridefulness against God, sexual immorality, and a slew of other things. All of this was just not part of God's will. Lot was being saved by God before he destroyed these two places. So he sends his angels to prepare Lot to move with his family. They were giving him a heads up in verse 12, asking if he had any other family members around that he didn't want to leave behind. They instructed him to urge them to hurry and leave. But when Lot that same night went to go warn his, his family members and told them exactly what the angels had warned him about, they didn't take him seriously. They thought he was joking. Then the next morning in verse 15, it says the angels told Lot to hurry and to get out right now. But Lot still hesitated. It's crazy to me un to understand because if someone were to tell me to hurry and leave or else I'd get swept away in destruction, I would have booked it out of there. Maybe like his other family members though that he tried to warn the night before, he started to feel like it wasn't for real. But sometimes that's what happens when God tells us to move. We do exactly what Lot did at first. We hesitate. So in the chat, I've got another question for you. I want you to help me out. Let me know why is it that sometimes we hesitate on what God is telling us to do. When God wants you to move forward, it's for right when he tells you. Not when you're ready or feel more comfortable, it's for right in that moment. His instructions are always clear, but it's up to us to be still enough to listen and to hear from him. When he tells you to let go of that relationship, that friendship, that pr profession, the drinking, the smoking, the gossip, he's not saying, hey Jen, when you think you're ready, I've got an idea for you. When God tells you to go, he's saying, go now. The angels told Lot to get out right now because delayed obedience is still disobedience. Verse 15 mentions that when Lot hesitated, the angels literally had to drag his family out running until they were outside of the city. God does that for us too, even when we may not realize it. Have you ever felt, felt God tell you to do something, but you avoid it, and then something happens that gives you that final push to do it, and now you have absolutely no choice, and then you start asking yourself, why didn't I just do it sooner when God told me to? That's God dragging us out for our own sake. But why let it get to that final push, though? Being obedient to God immediately saves us from so much stress heartbreak, wasting our time where we weren't meant to be in the first place. God cares for us and is a loving God. He doesn't tell us to do things unless it's for our own good. Even as we move forward though, because we may not know what's next, but God does, what we are leaving behind might suddenly look better. When God wants you to move forward, the enemy will try to remind you of the past. He'll paint this picture of how good it was. It'll look like your anxiety was more calm when you were smoking. It would look like you had less stress when you were getting drunk and partying. It'll look like you didn't feel lonely when you were with your ex. Your life was easier before you gave it to Christ. The Israelites struggled with these exact same thoughts when God was delivering them from Egypt. Because it is uncomfortable, it's new, where God is taking us may feel so difficult at times. In Exodus 14, 11, the Israelites literally rashed Moses when he was just doing his job, what God told him to do. They said to Moses, what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. They literally said being in captivity in Egypt would have been better. 
houseway. Because the unknown was hard, it was uncomfortable, and they preferred the difficulty that they already knew. The past seemed better. But our comfort looks better than the new journey when we don't put our full faith in God, trusting that he is in control of what's to come. We can't semi or half trust. We need to trust fully because he never fails. Romans 8, 28 reminds us that we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. God has a purpose for you that is greater than the old he wants you to leave behind. That's why it's important for us to remain focused on what's ahead. How many times do you look in your rearview mirror when driving and not to back up? Isn't it distracting you from what may be right in front of you that you should be paying attention to instead? 2 Corinthians 10.5, Paul advises us to pray to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ, especially the thoughts that aren't in alignment with God's plan for our lives. The best way we can stay focused and present in what God is doing in our lives is to stay connected to him. I can't lie, when quarantine started, I was amped. I thought to myself, I'm working from home. I have way more time now to just bask in the Lord's presence and go harder in prayer. But what actually happened is that with all this free time, it became harder to be intentional and consistent. I would catch myself sometimes not even getting into the word for a day or two. And I literally had to check myself. Yeah, okay, God gets it. The world is off the chain right now. But in all honesty, we cannot afford to lose connection with him. What we don't nourish and nurture will become weak. I don't know about you, but I cannot live life with a weak relationship with God, no. Especially not now. Not with the purpose he has for my life, and neither should you. We need to stay connected and stay focused. We can't be tempted to dance with what was left in the past, even with the reminders from old friends, old thoughts, old feelings, old memories. We are called new creations in Christ for a reason. When the enemy tries to remind us of what we left behind and we aren't focused on God, there will be times where the reminders cause us to look back. When God wants you to move forward, you cannot look back. There's no room for us to look back to our old ways when we are move, moving forward in our journey with Christ. It stunts our growth and it delays the new things that God is trying to do in and through us. I don't know about you, but I would hate to be the reason for my own personal delay in my purpose. And there have been times when I actually have been. Staying in relationships longer than I should have all for the sake of having hope that it would change into something that God wanted, even with all the very obvious red flags. Like, girl, bye. We have, but we've all been there. Verse 17, the angels were very specific. They warned Lot and his family to not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. It's time we stop looking back at what God wants us to leave behind. It's time we stop hesitating and surrender fully to the journey. It's unknown to you, but God knows. He always knows. He goes before us and fights for us. It may be difficult, but it's always, always, always more than worth it. Lot's wife did exactly what she wasn't supposed to do and looked back. She turned around, back to her old habits, her old friendships, her old idols, because she wasn't sure of what was ahead. Isaiah 43, 19 tells us, for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Doesn't 2020 feel like the wilderness? We can't let what God is doing right now go over our heads. I call this the year of revelation because the way God is bringing so many things to light to be exposed, I'm not talking about revelation, the last chapter in the book, in the Bible either, I'm meaning revealing. You could not miss it with your eyes closed. He's unearthing the things we need to leave behind and change. He's showing us what hasn't been working for hundreds of years. He's letting us know where the real issues are, but it's not for no reason. There is a plan 
a plan for restoration, a plan for us to truly love the way he has called us to, a plan for his peace that surpasses all understanding, a plan for justice and righteousness to sweep the earth. My God's plan is good, and he uses every single moment for his good. He's healing hearts, he's reconciling families, most importantly, he's leading more souls to him. Yes, even now in this time. We just can't miss all this because we are busy looking back. I urge you to please be present in the now and continue moving forward. Do not look back. It may feel uncomfortable and it may feel like there's a lot of unearthing and there's a lot of pain that's happening. But like I said before, what's coming is better. Don't let your heart be hardened because you looked back. Look ahead and look ahead right now. I want to close with this. Even in this confusing and pretty dark time, God is still doing a new thing. It may not seem or feel like it, but he never fails. His voice is so audible, and I believe that tonight he wants to remind every student, every leader, and even myself to be attentive and not miss what he's trying to do. It's important we stay focused and keep our eyes and our hearts set on him. Be present in the moment. Don't miss what God is trying to do for you and for others through you in this season. So let us pray. I just want to pray us out right now. God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for this message that you have brought to so many students and so many leaders and even to myself, God. I thank you for the new thing that you are doing in this season. I pray that you not allow, that we do not miss, that we be attentive, that we set our eyes and our hearts on you now and forevermore, God, even in the difficulty, even when it feels uncomfortable, God, that we continue to look forward and move forward walking with you. We thank you that you fight for us. We thank you that you go before us. We praise your name. In your holy and precious son, Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love you guys. See you in cruise.